Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing another part of my makeup collection. Today is obviously going to be foundations. So I'll just go through all the foundations I own, some pros and cons about each, what shades I wear in them. And if that sounds interesting, just stay tuned. We'll get right into it. So first I'll just talk about obviously like the ones that are at the front. So these are the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation Sticks. Um, these came out a while ago, kind of when uh, stick foundations were making a comeback. The first one I bought was 153, it's this one here. And I don't know what I was doing when I picked this out, but it's just too dark for me. And it's weird because if you look at the top of it there, it looks lighter than it does on the sides. Like you can see how dark it actually is on the sides. So. I don't know. It's a bit of a... I had a hard time finding a color in the shade range. So instead of returning that one, for some reason I went out and I bought like a, like a way lighter shade. So this is 125. Um, and what I do when I wear these is I just kind of put a couple stripes of each of these on my face. And when they blend together, I just use a beauty blender. They actually mix in pretty good and make a pretty good shade for me. Um, these are fairly pricey I guess I think they're in the like 45 to 50 dollar range um, once again I'll put all the names of each product uh, the shade I wear and the price in the description bar below um, these are one of the only stick foundations I have I don't tend to use a lot of stick foundations because I find that they a lot of times are kind of like drying or just don't sit on the skin as well as like a liquid foundation does um, but I tried these out because a lot of people were saying they were awesome and I originally did really like these. My favorite part is just like how easy it is in the morning. Like whenever I'm in a rush, I can just like, you know, pop it out, put a couple stripes on my face and um, blend it in really quickly with a beauty blender and you're ready to go. Um, but I don't love these. I find that I get a little bit more oily than normal when I use these. So I think if you have more oily skin than I do, and I'm pretty normal skinned, you probably won't like these unless you really just feel like setting your face and touching up your face with powder all day. Um, so I am just kind of using these. I've actually made it a point to use these more in the next little while just so I can use them up, but I probably won't repurchase them. Um, I'll talk about another stick foundation that I love way more than these um, pretty soon. Uh, so yeah, these are not my favorite product, not my favorite foundation I've ever bought. Next um, is the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. Um, this foundation I actually really love. It's not, well, not fairly new, but Definitely only has only come out in the last year or so. Um, it's got a really cool packaging. I actually really like that. I think it's really unique. You get a pump with it. You get 30 mils of product, which is pretty standard for our foundation. Um, the price is, I want to say it's $45 or something along those lines. It's got a good shade range. Um, you can, I really like how you can, it's kind of one of those products that like the product goes up as you go through it. So you can see how much you have left. Like I can see that I've used all of this. So I've actually used quite a bit of this foundation. Um, I really like it. I picked out shade 6.0. Um, it got, it has like really great, like a full coverage lasts all day long. Like if I'm gonna go in and do a 12 hour shift and I want a foundation that's gonna stay um, nice looking from start to finish, this is usually what I will go for. Um, the only thing to remember about this foundation is that it oxidizes like crazy. So if you look on Sephora.com, you'll see a lot of mixed reviews on this and usually um, it's about it oxidizing. So when I just went in and looked at the um, shade range, I would have thought I would have been 7.0, but knowing that it oxidized, I got 6.0 and this works perfectly for me. So definitely when you're buying this, go a shade lighter knowing that it's gonna oxidize. Next, I've got my NARS Sheer Glows, which are just always my go-to foundation. I love these. They've got medium to full coverage. They look beautiful on the skin. They've got a nice finish. They've got an awesome shade range. And um, yeah, they're like, they're just my favorite. You get 30 mils, so super typical. The only thing I wish about these foundations was that they had a pump. They've got one of these things where you've got to like pour it out on your hand and hope you don't pour too much. And 
So, nah, that kind of sucks, but I love the packaging of these otherwise. They're sleek, they're in a nice glass container with NARS written on the front. This one is in Barcelona, so this is um, a better shade for me than the other one I have. This is Santa Fe. I think this is two shades lighter. Um, I wish that this one was a little bit more yellow toned. Um, it's a little bit light for me now. When I was using this, I was mixing it in with another foundation. I was mixing it usually with the Too Faced Born This Way foundation because that one was a little bit dark for me and mixing those together. Um, it made like the perfect shade, but these NARS Sheer Glow foundations are awesome. So the next foundation I have is the Hourglass. I think it's called the Vanishing Stick Foundation or something along that line. It might be a little more fancy than what I'm saying, but it's essentially a stick foundation from Hourglass. Um, the immediate downsides to this foundation is that it is very pricey. It's a 50 something dollar um, stick foundation. And here's the kicker, you only get 0.25 ounces of product in this. So if you wanna compare that to the Makeup Forever stick foundation, this one is less expensive. I wanna say probably $10 or more less expensive. And you get 0.44 ounces of product in there. So almost double. So. This is a really pricey foundation. It's not gonna last you very long. I remember when I used it probably after two or three times and I rolled it back down. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm already like, you know, I had already noticed a dent that I had gone through. So I'll show you how much I have left of this. And I've only had this since like November or December. Like that is it. That's all I have left. It's in this cool triangular shape though, which I will say is really useful when you're trying to like put product only in certain areas. Like, you know, you're going around your eyebrows or down the sides of your nose and stuff like that. So I can really appreciate that because most stick foundations are in like a circular shape. So the packaging is really cool. The product itself is actually really awesome. Um, it's a stick foundation that I love. It's got a really full, full coverage, but um, blends in with the skin really nice. Doesn't make me too oily or greasy like the Makeup Forever one does or has a tendency to do. So overall, I really love this product. Would I repurchase it? Probably. Uh, I want to because I love it and I love how easy it is to just go in in the morning, put some stripes on your face and blend them in. But it's so pricey for how little product you get. Um, even if this was like $10, $15 less, I'd be way more likely to go repurchase this. Um, this one I wear in Warm Ivory, which is probably a shade or two lighter than what I should have gotten. The other thing is that this line has so many shades. I, had so, I was kind of in a rush and I had such a hard time like narrowing what shade I was gonna be down because there's so many, which is an awesome thing, but I do think I got this a little bit too light. Next, I've got the um, Remarkable Foundation by Marc Jacobs. So this is actually marketed as like a full cover foundation concentrate. So it's supposed to be a super, super concentrated product, a lot like the Cover FX um, custom cover drops, if you've ever tried those. Um, so it's supposed to be a super, super full coverage foundation. It's got this beautiful glass bottle. Um, and it's a little bit strange though. Like you don't have, you might think this is like a dropper, but it's actually just this little like stick that you use to put the product on. And you might think like, whoa, that like, that sounds ridiculous, but you actually need so little of this product when you put it on that it, it's like, it's crazy because it's so full coverage and so concentrated. Um, this is something that's going to last you a long time. You're like, you're going to have a hard time getting through this just because you have to use so little. But at the same time, if you do put too much of this on, it does look cakey and a little bit heavy. So you have to be careful with it. But if you're looking for like a really full coverage foundation, um, that gives you more of a matte finish. This is definitely really awesome. I will say another thing I don't like about it though is like, when I screw the top back on, I get like product kind of squeezing out the side here. So it's a little bit messy, um, but it's a really pretty foundation. I wear this one in 33 beige, which is like a little bit too light. It's definitely like a winter foundation, um, but I must've got like zero sun last year when I wore this. Cause I remember thinking that this was a good 
um, shade for me, but like as of right now, it's a, probably a shade or two too light. Um, but I do really like this foundation. Next, I've got the YSL Touche Eclat foundation. Um, you get 30 mils of product, so super standard for a foundation. Um, I've been kind of like turning it up and down. It's it's a clear bottle, and I'm probably about halfway through, even though you can't tell right now because I've been turning it upside down and stuff. Um, I wasn't expecting to love this as much as I do, just because I hadn't tried any other YSL foundations before this one, and it just was so pretty looking though that I ended up wanting to try it. It's got such nice packaging. It's got this nice heavy bottle, gold lid. It has a pump, which I really appreciate. And the product itself is like definitely just a really pretty medium coverage foundation that I think would work on most people. It's not matte, it's not too dewy. It kind of sits right in the middle and it just looks really nice on the skin. I wear this in BD40, which is perfect for me right now. So really appreciate and love how this looks on my skin. The next one I have is the Bobbi Brown Beauty Balm um, with SPF 35. Um, so this is kind of like a BB cream more than anything. There's only three or four shades in the line. I have it in medium. Um, you get 40 mils of product in here. I am generally not a lover of BB or CC creams. Just because if I'm going to put something all over my face, I'd rather something with like at least medium coverage to it because I like to look pretty flawless. Um, but I bought this before I went down south. I was going to Dominican for a week last year and I wanted something that I could put on my face that would kind of even my skin tone out a little bit, have some SPF in it, um, but wasn't like a heavy foundation or anything like that. So this was actually awesome for down south. Um, I don't love putting sunscreen on my face just because it feels so gross. So I was so happy that this had SPF 35 in it. Um, lasted all day. I will say it was a little bit, I was getting like a little bit oily with it or more oily than I would like. Um, I wasn't setting this with a powder or anything typically, um, but it's really beautiful. I haven't used it a lot since I've been back or anything because usually I go for a foundation, but I think in the summer if I'm looking to go to, you know, the beach or the lake or something like that and I just want something easy to, um, even my skin tone, but still look really natural, that I'll totally go for this product. Next, I've got the Laura Mercier Silk Cream Oil-Free Photo Edition Foundation. God, that's a lot of words for one foundation. Um, you get your standard 30 mils in the bottle. I have it in the shade Suntan. Um, this is a foundation for me that just kind of sits in the middle. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's okay. There's two versions of this. There's more like a more matte version and a more glowy version. I have the more matte version and it just kind of sits in the middle. It's an okay foundation. Um, I wouldn't super recommend it just because there's others that I would recommend before this one, but it's not a bad foundation. So next I have my Laura Mercier Candle Glow uh, Soft Luminous Foundation. Um, this is the typical kind of 30 mils that you get. I wear this in the shade Dusk, which is definitely probably the lightest foundation I have. I think I bought this at the same time that I bought my Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation, and I must have been like really pale at the time because um, this would be too light for me just on its own right now, so I do mix it in with other foundations if I'm gonna wear it. Um, this foundation for me is kind of so-so. Um, you get definitely like a light to medium coverage in this foundation. Uh, you're not, like if you're looking for a heavy coverage out of this, you're not gonna get it while still having it look really nice on your skin. Um, but it is a nice kind of light, foundation um, and it does give you a really nice kind of glowy look to your skin. Do I think somebody with really oily skin would like this? No, um, but I think anybody with normal to dry skin would like this who's not looking for uh, a lot of coverage. So it's a not bad foundation. It's not my favorite, not the worst. And then I've got my Smashbox Camera Ready BB um, Cream. This has SPF 35 in it. You get 35 mils in this. I wear this in uh, light slash medium. 
Um, and it's an okay, once again, like I'm not a huge, huge fan of BB creams or CC creams usually, but this one actually gives you pretty good coverage for being a BB cream. Like I would say you can get like a medium coverage out of this. Um, this is good for the summer. This is something I wear like when I'm going to be out for a few hours and I'm probably not doing like heavy, heavy makeup, but I just want something on my face to even out my skin tone. And of course it's got SPF 35 in it, so it's great for that. Um, it's not something I wear a whole lot though. Um, I've had this for a while. It's, it's an okay BB cream. Okay, we're getting down to the last couple. So the next one I have is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. Uh, this has been all the rage for a while now. You get 30 mils in this. I wear this in shade 6. Now the thing that I really like about this foundation is you can find really yellow and olive undertones in this range, which I find I have a hard time in a lot of foundations finding foundations that are going to be yellow enough for me. This one is really awesome. So, I mean, on the opposite side of the spectrum, if you are very cool toned, you might have a hard time finding the right shade for you. Um, but this one for me is really nice. I can get a medium to full coverage out of it. It looks really, really beautiful on the skin. Looks nice all day. Doesn't make me too oily. Doesn't make me look, you know, it's not too matte. It's just really nice foundation. Now, it is pricey, of course, because it's Giorgio Armani, but... Um, I think it's worth it. This is one of my favorite foundations. I would say it's definitely probably in like my top five. So my last foundation that I have is the Maybelline Matte and Poreless Fit Me Foundation. Um, you get 30 mils in this. This one is from the drugstore, so it's a lot less expensive than some of my other foundations. I think it's probably in the $10 range or so, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, I found that like while this makeup at the drugstore has been getting a lot better in the last few years, it, the prices are definitely um, creeping up there too. Um, this has got 30 mils in it. It's a decent foundation. It's not something that I go to a whole lot just because I don't tend to love really matte looking foundations. Um, but this one is, it's a nice drugstore option. Um, they have the matte and poreless, but they also do have one that is a little bit more dewy. But I went with the matte one because I do like more dewy foundations typically, but it is nice every once in a while to have something that's pretty matte. Um, this is for normal to oily skin, and it's a decent foundation. It gives nice medium coverage. It lasts pretty good. Is it? Does it make you totally poreless? I don't really think so. I don't notice that really when I wear it. I mean, it keeps me matte, but it's just a, it's a typical kind of decent foundation. It's not bad for the price of it. So those are all of my foundations. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I always like looking at people's makeup collections. Um, gives me, it's like just such a good way to get like some really quick pros and cons to each foundation and kind of see if there's anything that you would be looking to try. Um, I'll be back next with probably my eyeshadow palette collection or my highlighters. I can't, haven't really figured out which one I want to do first, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.